Speaker, and uh, it's my privilege and pleasure to join the discussion on this very, very important bill to all Canadians. Uh, bill C-23, purportedly the Fair Election Act, seems to be improving in some ways uh, the electoral system for all Canadians, but in other cases, some significant shortcomings. The good news, Mr. Speaker, is that despite repeated calls by our party and uh, repeated promises by the government, and repeated uh, uh, pleas by Elections Canada, uh, the government has finally tabled a bill. Um, hopefully this bill will proceed and come through before the next election. Of course, only uh, the Prime Minister knows when exactly that is. So we're pleased that the bill is finally before us. What we're not pleased with is that the government has uh, called closure on this very extensive bill. Uh, the current Elections Canada Act is over 300 pages. The amendments are comparable to that. Clearly a complex bill, clearly a bill of great importance to all Canadians to ensure that they have equal right to vote. And secondly, that uh, any uh, voter fraud is, uh, is prevented, first and foremost, and then responded to. So here we have this fast-track debate. Uh, I'll do my, my best in my 10 minutes to try to raise some of the issues that have been raised by Canadians. Um, what is uh, equally important, though, Mr. Speaker, I want to point out is it's one thing to pass a law. It's another thing to put in place uh, the administrative system so that uh, the law will be in place and that Canadians will actually be supported to vote. Uh, there are a number of measures in the bill. Um, as a former enforcer, I'm pleased that the government has chosen to increase the penalties uh, to $50,000. Regrettably, we have proposed $500,000 and some very egregious uh, potential offences under this law and Elections Canada had called for 250000 So nice that it's increased, but uh, a little bit short. Uh, some of the measures that are causing uh, concern are uh, the changes to the powers and the mandate of Elections Canada. Uh, one of those areas, Mr. Speaker, is the power of Elections Canada to actually promote electoral engagement, actually uh, encourage and enable Canadians to vote. Um, what this law is doing is significantly narrowing uh, the ed education mandate of the, uh, the head of Elections Canada. Right now that's very broad, can implement public education information programs to make the electoral process better known to the public, particularly persons who experience difficulties in exercising those rights. Uh, the minister may use media, any means, to provide the public inside outside Canada with information on the electoral process. Uh, that is being removed and uh, the educational mandate of uh, the Chief Electoral Officer significantly reduced to uh, simply letting people know where, when, and how they vote. Uh, definitely a step backwards. One of the most important measures that we need to take is to encourage Canadians to vote and uh, to tell them ways that will make it easier for them to be enumerated, and then when they get to the polls, they actually have the right to exercise uh, that voting right. Um, uh, very concerned about uh, the, this, this backpedaling. Um, voter disengagement as well is a really serious problem here. Um, the government its wisdom, because they found a uh, relatively higher uh, uh, error in, in vouchers, have decided that therefore they'll just throw the baby out with the bathwater. But we're told that the reason why some of those vultures were, were judged invalid is simply because of the lack of experience of the elections officers, not that the person who was seeking the voucher, uh, voucher support was not able to vote. So we're very deeply concerned that's uh, disenfranchising more than 100,000 voters potentially, and particularly our youth and particularly uh, First Nations. At a time in our country where we're trying to get youth more engaged in elections, it's not the time to put more barriers into their, into their rights. Um, I can uh, uh, certainly uh, testify here the many incidents that we found in my own writing during uh, the uh, times that I ran for office where not just students but many longtime residents found that they were not enumerated or they were put on the, the wrong list and they spent the day running from uh, voting poll to voting poll, some of them just giving up and not being able to vote. Uh, students. Uh, for in many cases, the advanced polls are held during exams. Very difficult for students uh, to get to those polls. Uh, those advanced polls are set in places with no bus service. And uh, uh, my volunteers actually uh, instigated a vote mobile, which would help students, no matter how they were voting, to get to those polls. 
So a lot of uh, very pragmatic measures as well, in addition to legal changes, that the country really has to dedicate itself to. And I think that there's a very strong role for Elections Canada to play in identifying those kinds of problems. Uh, the government, in its wisdom, is saying they're going to add additional days to vote. But uh, student exam time, as I'm sure the pages in this place will testify to, extends over quite a long time period. They will be so enamored with trying to get the best marks possible and a good job when they graduate that they may be distracted. So we need to make sure that those advanced polls are also readily available to students who are studying and can vote. Uh, one area, Mr. Speaker, that I want to particularly speak to is uh, the enforcement regime. Now, the government members in speaking to this bill have stood up and said, this bill is going to implement a system that will actually ensure a more um, effective enforcement and compliance regime. Mr. Speaker, nothing could, could be further from the truth. Um, the government is moving the office of the commissioner onto the office of the director of public prosecutions. But strangely, they have chosen that this is the only enforcement office that will be reporting to the director of public prosecutions. Um, I fully applaud the government that they understand the important concept that you need to separate out the administrative and the permitting uh, functions of a government regulatory agency from the enforcement and compliance. But what has been the norm for quite some time in this country is to still have that entity, the enforcement and compliance entity, report to the minister. In this case, it would be the chief electoral officer. There's absolutely no rational reason for moving this office under the, the uh, Office of Public Prosecutor. And uh, I would like to point out, Mr. Speaker, that the, the mandate of the Director of Public Prosecutions has not been changed whatsoever. Uh, his mandate already includes advising law enforcement agencies or investigative bodies in respect of, of prosecutions. He does not advise them in the course of investigations. That is still the duty and function of the investigative unit of Elections Canada. And so what you usually do in uh, an enforcement office is you employ personnel who are both well informed on the legislation they're going to be enforcing, in this case the Elections Act, and also well informed and trained on investigative and enforcement mechanisms. In this case, what we're doing is we're separating out uh, the Commissioner for, uh, uh, for Elections, completely disparate from the Office of Elections. Uh, they've stated, as I understand too, they want to make sure the Commissioner has not been employed by Elections Canada. Uh, possibly a big mistake, um, but we need to make sure that there is a closer linkage. So uh, that is a very, very deep concern to me. Uh, in addition, uh, this, new, this legislation has not delivered the new enforcement powers that the Chief Electoral Officer has called for. And very understandably, as a former enforcement officer, I fully understand why he is asked to have the power to compel witnesses to come forward and to provide testimony, and the power to demand uh, documents, financial documents, from political parties. Um, it's absolutely absurd that investigators, to do effective investigation, are going to have to go each time they want information or to approach somebody to provide important information to seek a court order. That is not a barrier that is in place for any other regulatory enforcement agencies. I think that they are taking a step backwards rather than a step forward to ensure effective enforcement. Secondly, uh, what one would have hoped for is that the government is talking about actually having an enforcement compliance strategy and policy for more effective uh, delivery and uh, consistent delivery of their powers. We heard before me, Mr. Speaker, uh, a Conservative member complaining about how he thought was he was prejudicially treated by Elections Canada in exercising those powers. The best remedy for that is to have a public, consistent enforcement and compliance policy. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I look forward to answering any questions. And comments, questions et commentaires. The Honourable Member for Malpec. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, gotta, I, I listened to the <clears throat> member for uh, Selkirk uh, Interlake uh, earlier, and we, we heard his story. So I've got a, uh, a, a question, really, on some of the problems under the Election Act that, needed to be, uh, that needs to be solved. And, uh, in my particular riding in the last election, I had <clears throat> certainly uh, uh, an incident as well, and it was the fact that the uh, former uh, uh, Minister of Public Safety, uh, Vic Taves, uh, his uh, chief of staff, 
spent uh, three weeks in my riding, uh, working on the, uh, on the campaign, living in a basement. We know he's paid $160,000 uh, per year. Is, uh, I do not know, because we never applied under access to information, whether or not he was on leave while he was there. But the fact of the matter is, we know that through a minister's office, a certain uh, candidate in an election was being targeted. Is there any way under the Elections Act that that should be covered? Yes, uh, and the heckling from the other side, I know the name, I know where he stayed, I know what he was being paid when he was an official salary, and I know my riding was targeted. So, uh, we don't know that for sure. We'll check. But uh, I wonder, is there any way, or should there be any way, of dealing with that kind of thing, or just we just accept it as is? It was, it was a fun question. The Honourable Member for Edmonton, Strathcona. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, there are a number of personal cases uh, arising in the House about the way that certain members feel that they or their colleagues' uh, campaigns were targeted. I can't speak to specifically what measure would be in place, but I would hope that uh, extended powers uh, to the Commissioner, the Chief uh, Elections Officer, or uh, the Commissioner for Elections would be able to investigate into those matters. One thing that we absolutely need to make sure is that there is not political interference in, uh, in the delivery of elections. Questions and comments? Questions and commentaries? Lana Abbott, Deputy de Saint Lambert. The Honourable Member for Saint Lambert. I would like to begin by congratulating my colleague for her question and um, put out as a reminder, Mr. Speaker, that the Conservative govern uh, government is doing a disservice to our democracy. They have imposed over 50 time allocations and they are further uh, undermining democracy with Bill C-23, which will prevent thousands of people from voting through certain measures. And the system of uh, vouching will not be allowed to function anymore. Can my colleague express and explain to this government how this bill is a democratic bill and how, how it defends the voices of those who are in isolated regions. Member for her question. Uh, very briefly, Mr. Speaker, one uh, area that I did not have a chance to speak to, which is in the area that uh, the Honourable Member is raising, is our, our legislation and policy at the federal level should absolutely move towards enabling and ensuring all Canadians have the right to vote. And uh, one of the powers that has been removed from Elections Canada is their ability to contact uh, First Nation band offices to actually offer assistance. Uh, to organize voting on reserve and to make sure that staff is available. From my own personal experience, having gone to the Samson Band prior to an election, um, it helped to bring them out. It helped them to identify the need that elders couldn't get access to polls, so the chief uh, made a bus available and they provided radio announcements so that people knew when and where exactly to vote. Um, I'm very deeply concerned that instead of moving forward to give even more powers to Election Canada to engage and inform electors, what this bill is doing is reducing that ability. Parliamentary Secretary of the Prime Minister. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, um, I just want to ask my colleague, she, she had uh, touched on uh, some of the new powers that she was hoping to see from uh, in, in this bill. I wonder if she might uh, comment on some of the powers that actually are being given to the Commissioner, uh, which include, uh, as she mentioned, steeper fines, uh, uh, but they also will in include uh, um, uh, fines or penalties relating to political financing rules, relating to registration on polling day and advanced polling day, relating to non-compliance with proposed uh, voter contact registry and failing to keep scripts and recordings, which is uh, at the heart of the robocall uh, uh, investigations uh, relating to voter deception. Uh, so there are a number of areas where we've actually given the Commissioner more powers. I might wonder if she might comment on those areas as well. There are about 20 seconds for the member for Edmonton. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to see that uh, the penalty provisions are being extended to those kinds of offences. The problem is the necessary powers to actually investigate those offences have not been extended to the officers, and therefore you can have all the penalties you want, but if you can't investigate properly, you're not going to bring forward any charges. Resuming debate, Lady Prezi Debad. 